Thanks. Thank you, Martin. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Sarah. I am I'm in the open source developer as a developer uh, in core. So I'm not in the mobile team developer. The, the, the mobile team are all these guys. Sander is our coordinator because it's the open source coordinator. So we share the same coordinator. But uh, Juan, Dani, Pau, and Berta are the main um, team uh, in, in working on mo mobile features. All the features I will show you. I know all of them because they are also based on Barcelona with me. Uh, but there are more people uh, in HQ which help us to improve and to uh, make grow the mobile app, uh, like Mary and Helen, uh, and Helen with the documentation, and Barbara and Alberto with the UX. Uh, what's new in Moodle Mobile 3.3? But 3.3, it's not the last version, it's 3.5, uh, 3.4, sorry. So why I have to explain this? I think they have a nice feature, and it's important not to see only the last ones. It's also important to see other features that have been included during this year, and that's why I think it's also quite nice to you see these features. Uh, these features, were, this version was released on May of this year, uh, and include all these uh, features. Uh, the, after of this has been released after of May, there were the releases two more uh, versions, 3.3.1 and 3.3.2. And all, these are the main uh, features. Let's see more detail. It. First, first release included in um, this version, 3.3, was uh, uh, it also includes three more activities. Uh, for, so feedback, listen, and database activities. So now it's with this version was almost uh, fully supported from the point of view of the student, because from the point of view of the, of the teacher, there are also many things uh, to do, but from the point of view of the, of the student, it's almost complete. A uh, little bit a spoiler about 3.4 uh, news. It's that now all the activities are included. So now it's fully, fully su for complete support. We will see some minutes ago. Uh, now uh, with the 3.3 version, uh, we can uh, also log in via OAuth. Uh, so you now, with the best, if you have this version, uh, you can log in uh, through Google, Facebook, Microsoft directly from your mobile app. So it's so good. Uh, one of the news in Moodle 3.3 uh, core version was the course overview. Uh, it includes two tabs. It's not only the list, the course list that, as we know, as this version. It's uh, also a progress uh, completion if it's enabled, so you can see wh where are you and where, what you have to do to include. And this feature has been also included in 3.3 mobile app. And it's also included the timeline. You, you can also, you can see the list of courses, but you can see uh, f the, from the timeline the tab, you can see directly all the uh, activities, resources you have to uh, look for first because they are, are ordered by time. So it's so great. PIM Forum wa was wa one of the features included uh, in 3.1, I think, so it's long versions ago. And in 3.3, it's also supported this feature, so you, yeah, now you can pin your discussions directly from the app. You don't have to go to the uh, web version to do it. And last but not least, uh, you can now, from 3.3, search messages and disable notification sounds. So it's also quite important features. There are more features than this. You can check for them in the website, but uh, these are the more important. And what about the mobile version 3.4? This version was released on uh, this, uh, at the end of November, so only three weeks ago. It's so young. Uh, and it has these features. Let's see more detail it. First, it's not uh, in the app, but it, it's related to, because now from 3.4 version, you can highlight the app from your site. There are, there are some configuration parameters, you, so you, if you are an admin, you can enable these parameters to show you to, uh, to the students a link in the future or in the profile. 
So let them to promote the app, the use of the, or the app. So it's so great if you want your students to use more the, the mobile application. And related with the app, the news uh, in the app, uh, in the 3.4 version, there is support for workshop activity. So now we are present to announce that it's uh, fully support for, from the students' point of view uh, or to all of the resources and activities uh, included in the core uh, model version. You can browse all activities, you can submit, you can download, and even you can work offline if it applies. Because, for instance, a chat, an offline chat, it's not a chat. <laughs> so it has no sense. So now it's fully supported. You can now also enroll to PayPal, PayPal courses. So if you, from since now, you have to go to the website, enroll in the website version, and after of this, you can access to the course. Now directly you can enroll uh, from the uh, mobile app. So it's so great that you have, you are able to do a lot of things directly from the app. And even more features. Uh, there is also support for forgotten passwords. I have never forgot my password. Must I, I, have you ever forgot your password? Yeah? <laughs> Me too, sorry. <laughs> uh, so now you can also recover your password directly from the app. You don't need to go uh, to the web version. Uh, two new features of 3.4 version uh, that we will explain after me by Ankit uh, are, the, uh, are also included in this mobile app version. The, you can see the, the private files quota usage and the, the supported uh, category events. There is also support for restricted Vimeo videos, which was one of the more asked uh, things in our forum. So it's now we are really happy to, to include this feature. And we have improved some iOS uh, related things really, uh, with the file sharing and uploading. Have you ever heard about the desktop app? Who, who of you know the, the app? Oh, only? Ah. Yeah, well done. <laughs> yeah. I recommend you to use a mobile, the desktop version. It's, it includes all the features of the mobile app. And why to use it if I can have a browser in my laptop? If it's better because it has more uh, things. Because of the offline capabilities. You can go wherever you want with connection or without connection and do a lot of things. So it's so good uh, to try it. People during these days, you have been talking about connection problems. So this can be one solution for you. So let's see. And it's also valuable for, for different operating systems. So you don't have any excuse, don't, to, so you need to try it. You can download for free uh, on this link. It's for free. It's like the mobile app version. So you, you have to do. And what's coming? What are we planning to do in the following versions? In the Moodle Mobile 3.4.1, which will be released in February of the next year, we are planning uh, to download all the courses. Now you can download course by, one by one. But from this version, we will, you will be able to download all the, all the courses. So if you have a lot of courses, it will be so great because you can with only two clicks, you will be able to have all of them downloaded in your app or even in your laptop or computer. So, and we'll also uh, we'll fax some bugs. And what about Moodle 3.5? Uh, we are planning to redesign the app, uh, things inside the app. It's not inside the app. And also, we would like to improve the outside, the user experience. And that's why we are going to need to, uh, to make it compatible only with versions with 3.1 or newer versions of Moodle. So it's so important if you want, if you are planning to uh, use the mobile app, uh, be aware and uh, upgrade your system to at least 3.1 version. And it will be, it will, uh, it, this version will only work with Android 5.4 and iOS 8. Uh, we are also planning to improve the way to, sub, to support uh, Moodle plugins. Now, 
it can be done. There are the remote add-ons. How much of you have know about the remote add-ons? Have you ever tried it? None? So if you have your own, yeah, you, you, ah, well done. Uh, if you have your own plugins and you want to uh, open directly from a mobile device, you can do it using the remote add-ons. Uh, he can explain how to do it because I'm not. <laughs> there are a lot of documentation uh, and we can, you can ask in the mobile forum if there is and I'm sure he will help a lot. Uh, but uh, we are planning to improve and to make it easier because now we realize that it's not so easy. Are you agree? So we are planning to improve. We have a draft specification. Uh, it, it's open. It's, an, uh, it's open. It's a, uh, work. We are working on this document. So if you're interested in know how it's going to, to be, please uh, look for it. If you can find, I will be so pleasant to, uh, to look for you, to show you the link. And you can comment on this document and give your opinion because it's so important for us. Perhaps we are not taking into account all the things that you know that we will be necessary. Uh, now you know a little bit better how, what, which things uh, you can do with the mobile app, what are the main features of the last versions. Uh, so I think that you probably will like to use the app uh, with your uh, students. And it's so, it's so important to have some, some things uh, into account when you prepare your content. That's why I'm going to try to uh, give you some tips uh, help you help you. I hope they help you. Uh, but before starting with these tips, uh, I want to make you two questions. Uh, have you ever think about how much time do you spend uh, on devices per day? Five? Yes? <laughs> it's only mobile or you're considering laptop, uh, more things? Only mobile. And if you consider all the devices? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> there was one, uh, some uh, figures from three years ago. Now probably will be, because it's, my feeling it's the same. It's not, now it's, I think it's so much time. It's six hours and a half. It's so much time here in La India. It's wow. In Indonesia, in this time, it was nine hours. So there are people who sleep less than uh, it's with the device. Yeah, yeah even sleeping. <laughs> so it's amazing. It's wow, crazy. And another question uh, Have you ever thought about the time you stay? It's time you look for any device, the mobile for instance, how much time do you spend? It's short, it's... And if you watch the TV, it's the same time? That the device? No, no, I'm sure that the bigger is the screen, the longer you stay looking for the application. So it's so important to take into account this, these things because uh, there is a a, a, a new concept, I love this concept when the mobile team is playing me. It's a micro moment concept. Have you ever heard about the micro moment? No, it's so nice. Micro moment is each time, it's quick action you do when you look your device. Some of them, the mobile or each, uh, each uh, device. Uh, so it's more related with smartphones or tablets because it's more, uh, it's smaller. So it's so important. First step, it's, this is for free. Uh, first step, uh, if you create content and you know that they are going to uh, use the mobile phone to your students, it's so important you create a small chunks of information. It's not a big information, it's small because they are only staying a micro moment looking for at the mobile. So if you are planning a lesson about one hour, no. No, it's not working because they are not staying as long with the device. And be careful because the mobile, it has a lot of good things, but it's also uh, so disrupted. So you can be interrupted with messages with you have a lot of things here. 
you can you have games you have so it's so important you prepare a small chunks of information to make easier to the students connect and disconnect to your contents and think about the mobile because it's not only to design courses for small screens it's because I, I have to create content and it has to be uh, show it in this size of a screen no a mobile phone is more than this so it's if you're creating content related with, uh, and you know that your students are going to use a mobile, please be careful because a mobile has a different input. If you ask uh, to the students, they write a long uh, text, it's not so easy. They don't have a keyboard, a big keyboard. So it's so hard if they have to write a lot with the keyboard of the mobile. So one thing to be careful, it's the things we ask to the students because the input things is, uh, uh, ways are not the same. Mobile lets you uh, two big and uh, nice things. You can move with it. It's easier than to take the laptop or to take the computer and to bring whatever you want. And you can be connected. So there are more possibilities than to stay in a class there and do things there. So you can move and you are connected when you are moving. So you have to think what you can do with these kind of things. You have more sensors. It's not only the uh, same things that you have in class. It has, it's so small, but I can take a photo. I can record an audio. It has a GPS so I can move and know where, where I am. So think about the possibilities we have, we can with it. There is an emotional connection with the mobile. It's not only a piece of thing. Uh, how much of you sleep with the mobile near your bed? I'm sorry, but oh, only, only. I think yeah, yes. Don't to be shame yet. Yes, we do it. Uh, it's it's more than this. If you can look at the screen, so because you get your batteries get off, it's like no. I was waiting for a message, but nothing happens because. But it's more than a mobile. And remember, mobile is disrupting. Uh, so uh, students can, can be uh, interrupted anytime because they receive a message, they remember that they have to do not, or they want to play some time with, or they want to uh, learn some language with. So there are a lot of things to do with the mobile. So important. And let's start with the tips. Uh, there are different, I will give you nine tips. Uh, they are organized in three blocks. Uh, content, there, there is the block, the first one is the content creation. The, after of this, we will see assessment, at, at least, at last, we'll see a communication. Uh, so let's start with the content creation block. First tip is consider the creation of the content uh, from the mobile uh, point of view during the, the queer creation, not when you finish, ah, oh, perhaps I could, I could do this with the mobile. No. If you start to thinking about a course, please start thinking about from the first thing, because probably it's not only to adapt the content to the application to see it correctly. It's because you can do more things. So it's so important to think all the time that you have this and your students also and they can also so it's important first thing my students will use the, the device or not so and if the answer is yes please think about it uh, when you start to create the content second tip remember micro moments they are only staying few minutes looking at the screen so it's important you prepare description short and simple it's, I have no, nothing more to do because it's micro moments and they can be disrupted. So please try to uh, resume everything. First tip related with images. Uh, before adding some image, you have to think three, three things. Uh, first, is the image really required? It's, uh, the image, it's also because I want to be nice, to make nicer the course. Or it's really important that the students see this image to understand one thing. Because if, if, if it's only really because it's nice, 
perhaps it's not necessary. They, are, they will get more time to, to see the course because they will need to spend some data to download it, so think about it. Uh, if the image is needed, okay, we have to include some images because it's nice. It's, it helps sometimes to uh, explain what, I'm, what, what we are going to, to explain. Uh, take into account the file size. It's, it's, you, I'm sure you will have probably nice photos like, like Solange this morning, but it's not necessary to, to put uh, the, big, the best resolution because remember the screen. In this case, it's important. It's only this screen, so four pixels or four megas image, it's not necessary because with a little more, it will be better. And students will save time downloading it and will save data if they are connected, it, if they are not on Wi-Fi. So, take into account. And it's important to crop the image, to show only the special part, the, the, the area of interest that you want to show to the students. So remember, only required images, the size, the size is small, uh, as, as small as possible, and crop it. Uh, the way that the images are shown in the, in the mobile devices is different in the web and the, in the app. If you open the, the web version in a browser, you know, like Chrome here, you, your, uh, all the images included in a course will be resized automatically, so you don't have to do anything, and automatically will be uh, resized. And in the app, it's the same, but you get a magnifier glass icon, icon, so you are able to see the image bigger. So it's important also to take into account, and if you want the, the students to open the image with a high resolution, it's easy to do in the application, so mm, you can advise them, hey, you can, instead of opening the, mobile, the Moodle in the web version, you can try the app. Last tip related co with content creation. It's the use of right media content. Uh, if you want to put an image, it's so important to use, if it's a photo, a graphic, a GIF, it's, it's so important to use the content, because if not, the size will not be the good, the, it, and probably the, the quality uh, it will be the same. Uh, related with videos and, and audios, it's so important to use the standards to avoid the, the students has to install other applications. Uh, in this case, is, this is also so important for any kind of file you, uh, you have to add. For instance, if, if you want to, your students watch a document, it's better to uh, use the PDF format because it's a standard. Probably they can open directly in the app without need to install anything. Uh, and if you use other formats like uh, DocX, for instance, it's um, probably they will need to install additional or they will, won't be able to open it, so we, we were in trouble. Which, it's like, no, no, better PDF or some standard uh, format. And it's so important also to warn users about the file uh, size and type. Why? Because of if they are going to need a special application to open it, it's so important we tell them. And it's also important the size because if they have to download a big video, I think they will appreciate to know it because if uh, they are at home, they're okay, but if they are outside and they have no data and the connection is not good, probably they will wait to uh, a good Wi-Fi connection to download it. This can be done directly in the web, the, in the web version. There is a, in, the, on, in all the resources, there are two parameters uh, which let you to, if you enable them, you can see the file type and the size directly. You check these boxes and when you see the resource, you can see, see the, the file type and the size. It's important to take into account that is, this is, uh, in the app version at the moment, this information is not shown. So, if we think, ah, we have uploaded a video and we have checked this uh, box, uh, be careful because in the app it's not showing. So it's better in this case uh, to write in the description field, for instance, write a comment. Be careful because this is a video of 100 mega, for instance. So important. We will try to add uh, in the app, but now it's not, so it's important to, to take into account. And what about, what can we do with the students from the assessment point of view? Uh, 
Uh, there are different kinds of activities. You can remember, we are fu fully support for all of them. But there are some that is so easy to use and it's so, um, you make, make you happy and you save a lot of time. One of them is the choice. It's so easy to create. And it's, you make, for instance, make quick kill, uh, make quick uh, class polls in, in, in class. If you, for example, if you allow the, 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 the bring your own device in your classes, it's so easy to use this, prepare some uh, choice and let them ask some things that you want to know in this moment. There is a trick to show the results uh, live when they are answering. Uh, so if you are interested, you can show uh, how they are voting and how the, 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 the answers are coming. Uh, this trick is explained in, in the doc, uh, in the Moodle doc, uh, how to do it. It's only to copy some files in the server, and so it's quite easy and it's so nice. And what about the quizzes? Uh, quizzes are also so easy. From the student, from the point of view of the students, you can, for instance, use them uh, to uh, diagnose before the training events, uh, or even when you have finished the class, you can give them some quizzes uh, to check if they have understood. So they can answer these quizzes when they are going to the class or when, when they are going to home, so, and use the mobile device for doing it. So think about it. It's not only the things that they can do in class, it's easy for them to, uh, to answer these questions uh, from the, from the uh, mobile. From the teacher's point of view, we have different hands and, uh, hats, and uh, it's so important to be aware about the length. Remember, micro moments, they are only staying a few minutes in our screen. So it's better to prepare three short uh, quizzes than one big one. I'm sure you will be able always to make them shorter. And uh, it, you will need some time to prepare it. It's everybody who has tried to create a quiz will know. But we'll save you a lot of time with the autocorrection. So, Valerie, right, I think it's a good thing you can do. And it's also very well uh, considered for, by the students. It motivates it, them. So, take into account. There are a lot of question types which are uh, really good for mobile, mobile friendly, uh, like all the short answer questions. Uh, and one curiosity, remember, in mobile, the drag and drop question, it's tap and drop. So it's quite different, but it's important to uh, know it. And more things. I, I, I tell you before, uh, this is more than a, a small screen. The, it casts a lot of sensors. We have a camera. We, have, we can make, for instance, a language, uh, in a language class, we can use for recording them to the audio to know if the, pronunci the pronunciation is good. Not, not as mine in English, for instance. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and you can also make another, think about another uh, kind of activities. Uh, what about a historical treasure hunt in a city and you have to visit different points and take some photos and after all this, right? It's, uh, you can do a lot of things, so think about it. It's not only uh, I can use the mobile in the app, it's a lot of things that I can use, I can do if I use it. And last block, the communication one. Uh, the app, uh, one of the things that using the mobile in general with any application is that you can be triggered by notifications, all kind of notifications. With the mobile app, uh, the Moodle mobile app is the same. You can get all this, the same notifications that you get in the website version or um, in the email. Uh, so it's pretty important you configure it. So. Be careful and be, uh, be, uh, be sure, make sure that it's configured quite, quite well. Uh, you, you will need to get the push notifications. You will need a, a notifier server. If you don't, wa do, don't uh, have one, you can register your Moodle site to have it. Remember yesterday when, when Martin said, there are, mm, no, says, um, I don't remember this. Yeah? Okay. It's, uh, it, there were a lot of uh, sites here in, in India, but we are sure that there are even more than we have registered. 
So it's so important to register because uh, it lets us to know, but uh, you are also, you have also benefits if you register your site, like for instance, to use the air notifier servers. And last tip, uh, it's so important to warn to people if you are planning to do something with the students that they, you know that they are going to, to use uh, some specific uh, mobile application, warn them before the, the session because on this way you will, uh, you don't have to spend some minutes when they, we, you start the session uh, with this kind of things. Before uh, finishing, only a few things. Uh, remember, mobiles, if we are using more and more a day by day. So you have, if you not, uh, if you have not think about it, it's important you start to do it now. It's not important you know the latest models. It's important to, to you know the capabilities, the things that you can do with the, the mobile. And remember, so important, think about sessions, short sessions, because the macro moments, they are only staying a few minutes. Uh, if you are thinking about using the smartphone, 15 minutes perhaps. If you are thinking about tablets, it's 30 minutes, so think about it. Uh, some few questions I think we have. And uh, before finishing, if you use the app, please rate it, uh, write comments, because we really appreciate your, your opinion. So uh, we hope you enjoy the app. Happy time for questions. To use the app is not necessary to register the model. Huh. Only uh, is necessary if you want to receive the yeah. push notifications on the mobile. So everybody so can how use. Do you register, you show me later. If you want to receive notifications. Like ah, but how do we register? What do we do? In the Moodle, yeah. in, Moodle in the administration, there's a ah. registration button. I have DVD Okay, uh, once again, uh, it's a similar question that I have been thinking about. Uh, you see Android and user security uh, is a serious problem. I mean, uh, there are very few people in the world today really trust Android for security. How does it impact us in terms of Moodle app? Because, you know, I don't know what to say about Android. If you don't, it says you can, they can enroll like, uh, or they can log in the same that in the web version. So it's true that you have to be careful if you share uh, the devices. Uh, it's so important you log out all the sessions. But if you are, it's the same that they, they with, with a browser. You open a browser and they left the session open it and go, it's thing. What's your concern then? Yeah, so uh, is, there, is there any uh, other data at, apart from the browser page that, uh, or the app? Uh, is, is Android recording any other uh, uh, data from the app? I'm not sure if I understand in the question. The, the only thing would be course information is downloaded into the app. Um, into your local device, yeah. Not really. I mean, uh, are, you, are you worried that a hacker will come and steal a PDF that a student downloaded, perhaps? They, they can only download. They the, might learn the same something. Files they can do it in the web version. So it's not, if they can download in the web version and it's not a problem for you in the app, it's the same. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not more than the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Just saying they enjoy it. Just okay. a quick thing to uh, add on. Uh, the files will be downloaded only into the Moodle app. Correct. Not on the device. Uh, no. No, uh, I'm it depends on how the device stores files, but they're stored in a protected area for the app. Okay, so there's no chance of uh, the learner being able to share a downloaded file to another mobile? There is every chance. 
uh, because I mean, that's the data security he was well because about. anything you can look at you can copy anywhere any device I, uh, of course, I'm asking more in a corporate context where yeah. uh, you know uh, most uh, companies have got a protected uh, system and they've got a licensed uh, Moodle version that's running and everything's run on a uh, an enterprise network that's got a thousand safeguards for information security. Mm. But that's not very applicable on a mobile, at least not yet. Uh, there are company specific apps to check uh, perhaps your mail or you know perhaps attend Skype calls through your mobile but not anything beyond that so it uh, you can't depend on company security to protect your mobile if it's your personal device if it is of course a company issued device then they'll have mm. their own safeguards but if somebody's taking a Moodle course on their personal device this data security could could uh, be a concern, at least for same with desktops. Uh, if you're on a laptop, yeah, absolutely. You, uh, but, uh, desktop laptops, uh, company issued ones, are uh, fixed most most of the times. Well, if it's a company issued phone, then I assume they'll yeah. they'll pick a secure, uh, uh, you know, uh, a secure distribution, network. or yes. it'll be locked down. They can't install apps, things like that, and so it's the same. I think. Right. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that was the follow-up. The other thing I wanted to check was uh, uh, what are the plans for integrating other applications, mobile applications, through Moodle? So, for example, can Moodle interface with WhatsApp? Not camera. Can it interface with other third-party apps? So can I use Moodle to create a WhatsApp group and have that as a discussion forum? Uh, I I, I, I can answer yeah, this. Uh, so we do have plans to integrate Moodle chat with uh, other chat apps via bots, right? Because it's all about membership in those groups. In Moodle's accounts, do not automatically translate to WhatsApp. So there's no there's no direct method. You need a bot that's sitting in the group and is communicating back to the Moodle course backwards and forwards. It's the only way. And not just WhatsApp, which is owned by Facebook. I just want to remind everybody. But um, but Telegram or uh, um, the other 50 messengers, uh, the, you know, WeChat is very popular in China, etc. Um, so we're, we're, we're doing it through bots. Uh, not just, sorry, not just chat, I meant uh, any other application. Yeah. It could be, um, I, I think uh, yesterday I was demonstrating to Tom, there was a, a paid uh, chemistry lab application. And it, it sort of simulates a chem, a chem lab. You've got all these yeah. bottles, you've got all the chemicals, and you just play around with it. Yep. So, so you can launch like uh, You can launch apps through links. Right. Uh, but the inter-app communication on iOS and Android is not so great. Yeah. I was talking to Apple, and they, and I, they said, what's the thing you'd want my, us most to do? I said, make us be allowed to control other apps and, and launch apps and pass files to apps and have apps pass files yeah. back to us. They don't do it for security, uh, okay. which is the, it's part of the security of the mobile platforms, so there are some restrictions to that. Okay, but, thanks. Yep. Um, probably I'll <coughs> last question from somebody. Um, probably I'll just add up to uh, the discussion that was happening here. Oh, yeah. there you are. Hi. <laughs> so we are doing a lot of work for uh, like corporates that you said. So one of the things that you were, uh, said rightly was about PDFs. So we have installed an operation inside Moodle itself where the PDF opens there. It may not have 100% of its operations. But it very well opens there. It does not download into a mobile app. Secondly, for your SCOM files, they come in encrypted form. So you put that in the memory card. Generally, most of the users do not go to their memory card. They decrypt it, and then they see. So it looks like a remote possibility. <clears throat> Coming to the third uh, question that you said about linking it with others. So we are also working towards it where we are actually, like you said, through bots. We are actually integrating a lot of, so it has an inbuilt forum. We are also integrating like a Facebook where whatever you're learning, you would probably like to share in a closed community. So we are still in the process of doing it, but yes, a lot of work is being done around that as well. 
And sorry, where are you from? Um, I'm from Mumbai. My organization's name is Shazad. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, a lot of this is Moodle Net also that I was talking about, also what we're planning. There's a lot of sharing between things too. So I'm just taking over your session, Sarah. I hope you don't mind. About this. Um, my name is Rahul. I'm definitely last question so we can move on. Thank you. I just want to add on. My name is Rahul. I'm from McGraw-Hill. And we have our uh, digital offerings in terms of Connect, Connect 2. These are the digital offerings. For uh, higher ed customers in India, we have already inculcated uh, the digital platforms through Moodle. That's a single sign-on through Moodle, which could be uh, accessed, uh, accessed through web as well as through mobile. Number one, and all the applications, external tools, could be accessed uh, within uh, Moodle from mobile or web. It's doable. Okay. Thank you. Great. Um, I, I don't think you mentioned the single sign-on, did you? Did I miss the single sign-on? Uh, it was the wealth. Uh, yeah. Yes. You did mention yeah, yeah, yeah. it. I missed it. Sorry, I was looking at my. I was looking at my mobile. Yeah, yeah. It was, was <laughs> one of the features of people. Yeah, it's a great feature. Yeah. yeah. Single sign-on. Uh, Martin, one question I have. Oh. Uh, let's say my Moodle installed on a local network. So can I provide this uh, mobile app solution to my uh, employees? Let's say. Because it needs some public address, right? Uh, no, it, it talks direct. So you just put the, 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 the URL in the login screen. No, let's say my application is on the internet. That's cool. Some, let's say uh, with That's through fine. the IP addresses being accessed. So can yep. I provide yeah. uh, They only will, can use the, uh, the app inside your uh, internet. But it's, if they can access in, in your, in their, from their workplace, from the, they will access so also. So they need to be in the VPN, uh, their mobile as well, right, I believe? Yes. Yeah. OK, thank you. OK. Um, Although I'm tempted to keep going because this is a very interesting, we've got a lot of interest. But let's move on. We can have some questions at the end. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much for that.